Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm CS Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm at uh, Black Hat 2024 in Las Vegas, um, up in the Zscanner suite. And I'm here with Brett Stone Gross. Uh, Brett, uh, uh, what do you do at Zscanner? Talk about your role there. So I run the threat intelligence team at Zscaler, and you know we do all sorts of research on the threat groups, what they're doing, and then we build automated tools to detect the threats. And that's really an important function at Zscaler, right? The threat intelligence group, because uh, while you do your research search and you use it for reports, which we'll talk about one in a bit, uh, that actually does help fuel a lot of the product development. That's right. Yeah, yeah. so we track what they're doing and that allows us to better protect our customers uh, because a lot of these, uh, we, we look at it at a very low level, we reverse engineer their malware, um, and that allows us to identify areas where we can improve detections as well as you know things like ransomware, if there's flaws in their uh, encryption, uh, we can potentially decrypt files for free and, and things of that nature. Okay, cool. That's interesting. And uh, so, as I mentioned, we're here at Black Hat. Uh, uh, what are you hoping uh, to learn at the show, or what do you what you know? What's your goal here? Yeah. So a few goals. Uh, one to you know meet friends and um, meet old and new friends. Yeah. Um, second, ah, we're friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We got a new, new friend here, <laughs> and uh, also um, you know check out and see kind of. Uh, you know, what's kind of the, the leading edge of security and if there's you know anything that's kind of new and interesting and um, yeah enjoy Las Vegas as well yeah yeah it's really enjoyable it's hot out there though it is um, now uh, while the theme here is always AI there's always a few underlying themes of the show right uh, uh, and one of them is, is ransomware and there has been one of those underlying themes for years and years and years um, it, I'm not sure we ever get closer to solving the problem, though. In fact, I think it's gotten worse. And just uh, anecdotally, what are customers telling you about where they are with ransomware today, what, what they're struggling with, or, or what successes they've had? Yeah, so uh, what we've seen is ransomware uh, is one of the most significant threats that every company is you know, uh, concerned about, uh, as well as nation-state threat actors. Uh, but on the ransomware side, we're seeing uh, increases in ransom demands. Uh, we're seeing increases in attacks. And we're also seeing increases in actual payment numbers. And that's one of the things that we published in this report. Uh, we published there was a $75 million payment to one <coughs> ransomware group by a Fortune 50 company. And that's uh, nearly double the highest number that was previously known in terms of, of the size of 75 payments. million. 75 million. Huh. And uh, w what were some of the other data points in the report that you found interesting? So we saw uh, the U.S. accounted for nearly half of all the ransomware attacks. Wow. We're yeah. number one. Yeah, we're yeah. number one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're good at something. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we also saw the, the U.S., uh, in terms of the number of attacks, increased uh, more than 100%. Um, so the U.S. is you know, the prime target. U.S. businesses uh, are you know, falling victim uh, to these attacks uh, more than any other country by far. And you know, what we're seeing, too, is um, in our cloud, we're seeing about a 20% increase year over year. Uh, the good thing is that we've seen the growth has uh, somewhat slowed in terms of ransomware attacks, uh, but the actual payments are going up. Uh, and there's a number of reasons for that. And one of the things that we talked about in this report, um, and this is somewhat related to this $75 million payment, is the amount of data that is being stolen from these companies is increasing significantly. And previously, a lot of these ransomware groups would steal somewhere on the order of a few hundred gigabytes to maybe a terabyte of data. Um, and now what we're seeing is tens of terabytes, um, all the way up to 100 terabytes of data. Um, so this is causing businesses um, to be more willing and more it pressures these companies to pay these large ransoms. And we think that trend is going to continue. So walk me through this, this trend then, because if you think about, uh, you know, we're clearly we're living in the AI era. Um, I've you know read in papers and in the media and things people saying expressions like data is the new oil or data is the new gold things like that, and, and if that's true and we become so data dependent because we're AI dependent, then any kind of theft of data or ransom now, um, just the stakes get so much higher, right? Yeah. Is, is this is this a trend we're headed down? That's right. Yeah. So for AI, you need a lot of data and companies are going to continue to collect more and more data. So they <clears> can and in fact, AI up. generates more data itself, That's right. right? That's right. And so every time you know you add these you know, new collection features, you know, so you can improve your AI models, that's going to be an increased target for these ransomware groups to steal that data as well. Yeah, and uh, I think 
even though the company, I'm, I don't know if you knew this from the, the report if it said that, but what I read somewhere too was that uh, when you pay the ransom, about a third of the time, you don't actually get the data back. You're shocking the, you know, people that hold you up for ransom aren't honest, <laughs> right? Um, but uh, th that's never a recommendation, right, is to pay the ransom or? So we don't really offer yeah. uh, advice in terms of whether a company should or shouldn't. Um, what we do is, you know, we think every company make, needs to make that decision for themselves. Uh, there are instances where a company will literally be out of business if they don't pay a ransom. Yeah. So some so companies case, <laughs> then, yeah. Yeah, are, are in a very difficult position. Um, obviously, if a company can avoid it, that's probably recommended, but not all companies can avoid it. Yeah, and so what, is, what are some things companies can do to protect themselves and at least minimize the amount, the, the, the impact of them if, if they do get hit with ransom? Or I guess the, the, the better question is how do you protect yourself against it so if somebody does break in, they're not stealing all your data? Yeah, so there's a lot of measures uh, companies mm -hmm. can take, and we start off uh, and talk about it in the report with basic IT hygiene. These are simple things. Uh, like two-factor authentication is very simple, but it's, it's something that's quite effective in most cases. Uh, but also making sure you have network monitoring, you have an endpoint monitoring, um, and kind of an end-to-end -end and layered approach. Uh, and it, in addition to that, uh, what we recommend is a zero-trust uh, model uh, or architecture. And the reason for that is a lot of these companies that are falling victim to these attacks have these flat networks. Uh, someone authenticates with a VPN, and from there, they have free range yeah. to access everything. Un unfettered access to literally everything in the company. Exactly. Yeah. So we, we recommend you know, a zero trust architecture. Uh, you want to minimize um, you know, your exposure, especially to the internet, um, and put everything you know, behind um, you know, something like a zero trust infrastructure. So uh, you can't attack what you can't see, is, yeah. is how we, we describe it. Yeah, now Zscanner has been, I think, you know, the, really the um, the company to advocate for Zero Trust since the company was founded. And so how, why is that different? So explain, connect the dots between Zero Trust and, and, and why there's so much less data exposed. Yeah, so with a traditional VPN model, uh, you can think about it like a castle on a moat. Once you're inside, you're assumed to be trusted. Um, and that's not true, that's not the case. When someone connects to the VPN, they can have their credentials stolen. Um, their system can be compromised with malware where they can then leverage that system for access into the network. Uh, and then it's like being in the office. They can you know, scan the network. Uh, they can use uh, all sorts of tools to move laterally uh, and then compromise everything in that corporate environment. Whereas with the Zero Trust network, um, you can uh, basically have it so that you're actually not connected to the network, but you're connecting to individual applications. Um, so you can't scan the network. You can't see all these other systems um, that are connected to the network, um, and there's no concept of, of being connected to the network. Um, so it's much more difficult for an attacker who does compromise one of your systems, which is going to happen, uh, for them to you know, elevate that privilege and escalate their ability you know, to cause damage. Yeah, so in the case where somebody you know, maybe breaches a user through their credentials, which um, I think is easily the number one cause of breach, right, is credential theft. Yes, yeah, um, Yeah, is... Uh, um, you'd have access to maybe two or three systems, yeah. uh, but certainly not the entire company. Right. Yeah. Right. All right. Um, and uh, so, uh, Zero Trust, MFA, anything else companies should be thinking about to help with ransomware? So, network monitoring in particular oh. uh, is something really have to call out uh, because when you see that amount of data, uh, we're talking about data being stolen for yeah. you know, days to weeks. You know, if you steal. 100 terabytes of data, it's going to take a long time to transfer that data, even on a corporate network with a fast connection. Um, so if you have the proper network monitoring in place, it's important to make sure that if you see outbound transfers that are going on for a long periods of time, yeah. it's a, a red flag that you should take a look at. Yeah, even if it's not for ransom, it could be an employee who's about to leave. There's all kinds yeah, of reasons. Absolutely. But generally, none of them are good, though. Yes, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and and if if it is a, a normal use case, you might want to make sure that that destination and that user, it's expected yeah. behavior. Yeah. All right, Brett. Well, it seems like the you know the more things change, the more they stay the same. And so ransomware has been a problem for companies for years. It continues to be. And what your recent report said is the problem is actually getting bigger. Yes. And with AI coming, it who knows where it could go. Yes. Is that fair? Yes. All right, Brett. Was there anything else you want to add? Yeah, so I recommend everybody check out our uh, 2024 Threat Labs ransomware report. In fact, I'll include a link to the report in the YouTube description below.
Perfect. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's got a lot of good information, both of uh, what we're seeing out there in the wild, as well as information you can use to protect yourself. All right. Well, thanks. Uh, so on that note, I'll uh, wrap this up. So on behalf of Brett from Zscaler, I'm Zscaler Val from ZK Research, and thanks for watching. Uh, please hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time in my next episode of Zcast.